Another director I really like just made a movie about himself. And it wasn't The Fablemans this time. It was Bardo. And this is very clearly a movie about himself. In the same way that The Fablemans is very clearly a movie about Steven Spielberg. And it's going to be very difficult for me not to compare these two. Because one is kind of a shallow look at the love and passion about movies. Which is nice, but kind of on the shallow side without a super interesting main character or a thrust to the story. And the other is a borderline surreal, as the movie puts it, uh, oniric look at the director's past and more of a character study about the, the director currently, which I find vastly more interesting than this is how he got his start. As a small child, he got a camera and he shot it on film and he made a movie about some things and then he met uh, David Lynch and that that was it. I love this movie. I really love this movie. I think Bardo is a fantastic portrait of this director and it really puts into perspective who he is, what he's going through, and his kind of self-doubts and his self-worth in his own mind. It's all about just kind of what he's thinking about how he's feeling, what it, what kind of place he's in right now. And I find that so much more interesting than just, hey, look at me, I'm shooting on a camera, and I'm a small child, I'm in high school, I'm getting bullied by cliché bullies, and everything about this is cliché. Whereas Bardo is just about a man dealing with his family in a time in his life where he is successful, but also he feels completely isolated. He's struggling with being present. He's struggling with his nationalism. He doesn't know really where he belongs anymore. He's struggling with his family, the death of his, his child. He's struggling with his own mortality. He's struggling with a lot, and, and it very clearly paints the picture of this character, and it very clearly paints the picture of all of these things he's dealing with and struggling with. Because, again, he's at a successful point in his career, and I'm not talking about Alejandro Iñárritu. I'm talking about his self-insert character in this, Silvio. Uh, he is at a successful point in his career. He's making documentaries, or as he puts them, docu-fiction. And that's what this director is doing. He believes what he's making is truth, and he's always about truth and finding truth and being truthful. But he can't really deal with that in his own life. And there's a great moment when he goes to this interview, and the interview is just railing on him, like, you you don't you don't understand this, you don't do this, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you're, you're not a real Mexican anymore, you went to America. And there's a great sequence when the interviewer that he didn't meet ends up at a party for him and his new documentary or whatever release, and the interviewer is basically ripping his movie apart, which is essentially a critic talking straight to Alejandro Iñárritu about this movie he's currently making. He even is like, it's it's a pretentious thing, it's just jumbled, it's just scenes, uh, you know, I don't understand it, what's going on, it doesn't make any sense, why was he on this train, why was there water everywhere, why were they in the middle of the desert? It's basically just critiquing himself and probably a, a insert of his own brain. It's that, that interviewer character seems to be kind of like what Alejandro Iñárritu is telling himself. Like, oh, this I, this doesn't make any sense. Why is this happening? I, why am I doing this? I don't understand why this why I should do it this way. It, it seems to be kind of an insert of his own overthinking process. And I loved that. But I just love that it's this kind of trance-like movie. The whole movie feels like it's just water flowing in between these scenes. It's like he's wandering in between the, the moments of his life in a circle, which unfortunately gets a little over-explained by the end. I don't love the he had a stroke and fell into a coma to explain why things are dreamlike or oniric, as it says. But I do love how it tackles this story, because it is kind of a storyless movie. It is just what this guy is dealing with in his life. And that's about it. It's very clearly a 100% character-oriented and driven film. And personally, I love that type of thing. And that's probably why I didn't connect with Fablemans as much as I did with this. Because Fablemans is definitely more of the story of Steven Spielberg. Look at the story of Steven Spielberg. And this is, yeah, this is the Alejandro Iñárritu. And he's just wandering around and being sad and lonely sometimes and dealing with self-doubt. Uh, last five years, I realized that I was getting to a place that I have much less uh, to walk in the future than what I have already walked in the past. And in that becomes this sense of, oh, 
I'm gonna be looking back on my life and looking forward on what's left of it so he's not present anymore. And that's a big part of this movie is the dangers of not being present and how that's going to affect your life and the people around you. Because it is clear to a certain extent that he has lost touch with his two kids and his wife, at least a little bit. He's kind of wandering around these moments of his life and he's not really interacting or caring about his family there's this one scene when he's talking with his son and his son's like yeah i have thoughts i have feelings but just because they're not yours you don't want to listen to them and he all the while is just making a presentation on his laptop that he's going to show at an award he's going to get so he's not really present there and in every other scene he's not really present he has a party he goes to that's in his honor and he is talking with his father as a small version of himself which is awesome but not present again it's like the dangers of living in your head and that seems to be what Alejandro Iñárritu is grappling with in that at this point in his life is living in his head overthinking everything it's also just a great looking and well executed movie which is not typical for these type of uh, semi-autobiographical, autobiographical, and biopic type movies. These movies where they're based on a real event, based on a real person. It's always that person is taking center stage and nothing else is. It's like, oh, we can't take detract from this character, so we're going to shoot it in the most plain, boring, and kind of uninspired way. I'm crying. I love the look of it. I've always loved Alejandro Iñárritu's cinematography. Everybody that works with him is just going to be amazing because he has such an eye for visuals. There's so many striking visuals in this movie that I haven't even talked about. There's this fantastic sequence when he's walking around this this street and people just start collapsing and he's climbing up this mountain of bodies to talk to Cortez and uh, you find out that it's a part of a movie, but it's just a really striking visual and a lot of this just is absolutely stunning to look at. It's just a gorgeous movie. Yeah, I love that. I love that. If I'm being honest, though, I do have some issues with this. Uh, it's not a perfect movie. It's a very good movie, if not a great movie. But if I'm being honest, it's self-indulgent. Definitely self-indulgent. It's two hours and 40 minutes. You could probably trim 10, 20 minutes out of that. And I do think the tone could use a little bit of work. And there's some things in this that are, are just kind of there. They don't feel like they go anywhere particular. There's this subplot sub sub subplot like an f plot if there's a b and c this is like f th that amazon is buying parts of mexico which may just be look uh u.s is taking over mexico the u.s money system is corrupting other places i don't really know but it's only in two or three scenes and it's always relegated to the background like on a TV or on a radio or someone talks about it. Oh, Amazon just bought Baja, Mexico. And they have the backing of the U.S. government. Okay. I'm crying. I am here as you are here. The whole party sequence is amazing. When he's dancing to David Bowie. Come on now. How can you not like that? I give it an eight. I loved it. Goodbye. Goodbye.